Welcome to the tutorial importing and vectorizing images. So in this tutorial, instead of bringing in the same bitmap image and vectorizing it, I'm going to bring in a more realistic example. Um, vectorizing an, a bitmap image like this photograph is only going to give it a vector frame and treat this image as a bitmap fill. The more likely scenario is that you created characters such as this rabbit in a third-party software um, and rendered a JPEG or PNG or some type of format like that, or you scanned and drawn images and now you need to vectorize them and bring them into the software and make them vector forms so that you can animate them. So you would do exactly what you did to bring in um, a bitmap image. You'd either go to File, Import, Images, or you would click on the Import Images button from the File toolbar. And your Import Images browser window comes up. Once again, we're going to browse for an image but this time I'm going to select the puppy model sheet and say open. So it's a PNG and I'm going to create uh, a layer as well for this and let's keep vectorized imported items obviously checkmark this time because we'd like to vectorize them and just for the sake of showing you because I didn't show you in the last tutorial let's keep create symbol for imported items checked as well so it'll encapsulate uh, what I'm about to import into a symbol. So here for the vectorization um, you can choose to vectorize into black and white into full color or into grayscale. If you double click on any of these three parameters you'll bring up a dialog box which will allow you to customize each specific parameter. Um, in this case, I'm going to vectorize to black and white, and actually I'll double click on it to show you. So here's the vectorization parameters dialog box. The first image you he see here is your original image, the image that you're going to import and vectorize. If you'd like to see a preview of what that image will look like vectorized, taking into account these settings here, you can click on this button, this vectorize button. And here you go. So obviously the one character that was colored in will appear in all black because I chose the black and white setting. If I want to change some parameters here and have this preview automatically update, I just need to check this box here. Our own custom vector vectorization parameter, but for now I'll leave it like this and I'll just um, accept the changes. So then we're going to say OK. And yeah, so our puppy model sheet is just below our pagoda bitmap image, which is why we couldn't see it. It was hidden behind. I'm just going to uncheck those two things. And as you can see here, your image has been vectorized just like you saw in the preview. And in the timeline, it has been encapsulated in a symbol. And we know this because unlike these other uh, frames in the timeline, this one is this bluish purple, that, and it looks sort of like a film strip. So that's what lets you know that this is that there's this more to this layer than just the drawing that you see that you actually have to double click on it to enter it and then now you're able to modify this vector drawing and you can see here the puppy model sheet is actually vectorized because it has the red triangle, the yellow circle and the blue square symbol next to it so this is now a vector drawing and if you just select randomly you'll see that the strokes look like any other strokes you may have seen if you drew this artwork yourself using the brush tool and if you zoom in um, and say select the contour editor you can also you know edit the contour points and um, this is actually a lot bumpier than I thought it was so in the dialog box that you saw prior you're able to change the smoothing settings and I'll show you that in a few minutes and you can also color and edit in this layer as well And then these changes will be saved within your symbol. And to return to your scene, you just have to click on the word top here. And now you're back in your scene and your, uh, your puppy model sheet is here edited with the new red colored sweater. Okay, now let's look at creating a custom vectorization parameter by importing in the same image. So let's go back to the top here and click on the import images button. And then let's browse for the same image the puppy model sheet. And let's look again at our layer settings. I'm going to add an O2 to this layer name. So we want to vectorize. Let's create a symbol again. But this time, instead of choosing one of the three vectorization parameters, let's create a new preset. 
and automatically the vectorization parameter dialog box opens. So I don't know if I showed you this before, but in your original image you can actually zoom in and zoom out to see, and as you can see this is indeed a bitmap image. So let's just do a quick uh, preview here. So in the first section you have um, the input, and in this section you have the option of having one or two passes. If you'd like your color art separated and you would like different thresholds for the line and color art, it's best to choose two passes. The values for the threshold are 0 for white and 100% for black. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to do one pass. In the output section, you have no color art. Here, I'm going to actually automatically preview so you can see this. So no color art means to not make that section for the color art. It's going to make it part of the line. Um, if you want to do no texture, it's not even going to fill in the grayscale because it considers the grayscale like a bitmap texture fill. So if you want to generate a mat underneath it, you'll see this a lot just to give it, um, to separate it from the background so you can see the shape of the character a little bit better. Or color as texture. It's going to treat the color as a texture or bitmap fill. So that would be that. Um, but unfortunately with this selected, a lot of these other options are um, disabled, so I'm just going to uncheck this for a moment. The optical registration options have to do with scanning and images. Um, this is done mostly uh, in traditional animation where you've drawn all of your animated sequences on paper and usually there are holes at the bottom of the sheet of paper that attach all the sheets to a peg so that everything is perfectly aligned when you're drawing. So all of these options have to do with the peg um, where the holes are aligned as you're scanning. And the next section is the post-processing and this has to do also with the scanning. Um, so it removes holes, dirt, hair, uh, things that might accidentally get attached to those sheets of paper. The miscellaneous here is where you can um, up the smoothing a little bit and also close small gaps if there's gaps between uh, obvious thick black lines. The difference between these two smoothings is the first one smooths before the triangles are created. And I don't know if you remember that I just showed you as I selected randomly with the select tool the black lines of these characters, you saw that unlike a regular brush stroke where the stroke is outlined with orange and dotted with contour points, there's actual orange lines zigzagging and crisscrossing and forming triangles along that stroke. So those are those triangles that they're talking about. So this would smooth before the triangles are created, this would smooth after. And you can up this as well if you want a little bit to smooth it out a bit more. Uh, here the show strokes option, you can actually see the way the strokes are being created. Um, you can decrease the stroke thickness. So you can see the strokes a bit better here in the preview. And anything that I haven't gone over here in enough detail, once again, you can refer to in the user guide because all of these terms are well defined in that guide. So I'm going to accept this and escape. So that is my new preset here at the bottom. And then I'm going to click OK. I'm going to deselect this and double click and go into this symbol here. And so we can see as we select around that, let me zoom in and look at the color art one here. That it's actually been cut up into different triangles and pieces. I didn't actually separate the line and color art, it just brought it in as a gradient grayscale. So that's it for the tutorial, importing and vectorizing images. Stay tuned for the next tutorial, importing PSD files as separate layers.